This time on Poll Hub, new data from our brand new poll with NPR and the PBS NewsHour. We're going to dive in deep with what we found Americans are thinking about regarding the economy, Joe Biden, the continuing pandemic, going back to work in person, summer vacations. Yeah, that shouldn't take long. Then our America Now index for June is out, and well, Americans are feeling a bit more optimistic in some areas, less so in others. We're gonna take a look at that, and then we're gonna end up with Lee's fun fact. We have themed this one for the holiday weekend, Match. Speaking of which, the sooner we get this recorded, the sooner we can get out of here. So let's get to it. And hi, everybody. Welcome to Poll Hub. I'm J.D. Dapper, Director of Innovation here at the Marist Poll. And I'm Barbara Carballo, Director of the Marist Poll. And I'm Lee Marengoff, Director of the Marist College Institute for Public Opinion. As I hinted out in the uh, open, we had a, a short poll, uh, just a couple of questions for Americans that we grabbed <laughs> oh, and feel that. That's an inside joke. In polling, the longer the poll, the harder it is to get done because people don't want to stay on the phone forever. And this was a long one. We had a lot of questions about a lot of topics. But we got a lot of great data. Uh, where do you guys want to start? I mean, do we, we you know, spin the wheel and do a Wheel of Fortune? Or should we start with maybe Biden's approval rating? That seems like the, the easiest one to move through because it hasn't really changed very much. Well, there's a big pause there. We're, we're trying to figure out who is exactly going to answer first. You answered it, Jay. Biden's approval rating hasn't changed much. Um, and, and I think you know he's had an interesting time uh, in his administration, you know, obviously the honeymoon is over. Now we're getting into the summer months uh, and the you know, hope that he has a passing legislation that may be a little trickier. Uh, but we saw, you know, there is some concern on uh, more on the uh, economic home front um, in terms of how he's uh, handling uh, the economy. Um, I think that's sort of, uh, you know, a, a distant sound that's uh, starting to rumble. Um, and of course, no change in terms of his handling COVID. Um, those marks are, are strong, continue to be so. Uh, you know, the numbers on foreign policy, you know, better than President Trump had, but certainly not off the charts. Uh, just, and generally not a huge issue, uh, as big an no, issue for Americans. No, and so, uh, yeah. I was a little surprised that uh, they weren't a little stronger because I thought his overseas trip was rather successful. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's what the numbers say. Um, and not surprisingly, the immigration numbers continue to lag. Um, and so I think the change in here is um, some growing concern uh, about his handling of the economy and especially the numbers on inflation. Um, the fact that uh, things are starting to cost a little bit more is not lost on Americans as we ask uh, those kinds of questions. So uh, those seem to be the, the lay of the land on, on the Biden numbers. Yeah, let me pick up there because, Lee, I think you made a good point. Um, certainly, Biden's strength um, is still in his handling of the pandemic. But right now, many Americans think we're moving past that. Um, they uh, have told us uh, 63 percent um, have at least gotten um, one shot um, and are vaccinated. I think uh, those those numbers have pretty much stalled. We had seen it at 59 percent um, in May and it's now 63. So um, the people who have gotten vaccinated are likely to have already gotten vaccinated. And those who don't want to are not likely to uh, continue. But so so I think it's really up to uh, the president uh, and his administration to pivot now to something that really is of concern uh, to Americans. And that is the economy, as as Lee mentioned. Um, I think that um, Americans don't necessarily think that um, Biden has, um, you know, strengthened the economy. Um, it's it's really uh, divided right now. Forty four percent think he's strengthened it. Forty five percent think that he's weakened it. So there's a real divide there, which is a change from April when nearly half thought that Biden had strengthened the economy. So there's a it's not that people think he's doing a bad job, but if there's kind of a movement to a, a, a wait and see from that positive to to unsure. And uh, that's really that's really the focus right now. Um, issues on the economy that are concern of Americans. And this, I thought, was really interesting because all Lee points out inflation was the top of the list of economic concerns followed by wages, unemployment, housing, labor shortages. 
but the partisan divide on that, I mean, is just is just huge. Um, Republicans overwhelmingly thinking that um, you know choosing inflation as um, as an as an important um, concern. Uh, um, Democrats really focusing um, on on wages and and independents, depending upon you know which way they lean. Uh, focusing on on those top issues, so um, there's definitely a um, an agreement, a consensus that the economy is very important. There is not a consensus about how that gets fixed um, and how we move towards the future to make things better. One thing about that economy thing before we move on is, um, I think what's driving that is a sense that the, of uncertainty. And we did ask a question that we've asked for a long time about um, personal finances getting better, getting worse, staying about the same. And, and so we've tracked that over a long period of time. We've got a lot of trend data on that. And I think it's important to note that this is the first time since um, all the way back in 2013 that um, the number of Americans thinking their finances would get worse is up around the one in four mark. Now, that's not huge. Most people still think it's going to stay the same. But I do think it, it's notable that is significantly higher than it was uh, even a year ago. So I think there's a lot of uncertainty um, on the economy. Can we uh, let's let's talk about the going back to work in the pandemic and all that, because that's the other that's kind of where this uncertainty lies is, are we going back to work? How are we going back to work? What's the economy going to look like when it reopens? Uh, one of the things that st struck me was uh, how many people um, appear to be ready to go back to work uh, in person. Um, yeah, um, that was that was amazing. Right, big numbers. So let's talk about 86%. that. What, are, are, yeah, well, we're ready to go back to work apparently. Um, and what does work look like, and and how does that work for people? Well, it, it's I I was surprised by that number too. We we looked at people who um, are currently who are currently working, and eighty six percent of them said that they were yeah ready to go back in person. Um, I think though that um, there is going to be a variety of different options um, that people some people are are given uh, by employers. I think organizations uh, are struggling um, with how to get back to the new normal after COVID. Um, many uh, employers are giving employees the option uh, to work both from home and remotely. Um, but I, I have a sense that although things have been really, you know, thrown up in the air, um, we're kind of moving back to um, mostly an old normal with a, with a little bit of a, with a little bit of a, a change um, in, in how uh, the, the emphasis is just on in person and the options that people may be given if they're, you know, if they're able to to work to work from home. That remains to be seen because there's also significant concern, particularly among uh, Democrats and independents who lean Democratic, about another wave of coronavirus. So there is some so there's some hesitancy there. Uh, people are, I think. Uh, you know, we asked a number of, of questions about what people are likely to do right now. Um, and I know this kind of segues a little bit away from work, but people are going out to, you know, going out to dinner at restaurants. Uh, they're seeing family and friends, even if those people um, are not vaccinated and they are. So um, they're, they're, uh, they're less likely to want to go to, you know, closer settings like bars, um, even, um, you know, attending religious services, there's some caution there. And I think a lot of caution for, you know, live concerts and, and very large events, but pretty much people are anxious to get back to normal. And I think that includes um, getting back to work. Lee, what do you make of the 50% that are very concerned or concerned about um, an, another outbreak? A second wave, or really, a, I mean, we said a second wave, that might be a third or fourth wave, depending on where you live. Yeah, another wave, another wave. Well, I think they're, you know, they're, they're hearing about, uh, you know, the uh, the variants, and we're hearing about Delta and Delta Plus, and, you know, we're not quite sure what all that I means. thought that was a seat on an airline, yes, Delta yes, Plus, you got, apparently uh, you, it's much more worrisome than Yeah, that. yeah, you didn't get upgraded on that one, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, and, and, and so I think that that's part of what's going on. I think that, that makes a difference. I did want to swing back one, I don't know if it's a swing back or swing forward. Is Joe Biden a little bit right now a victim of his own success? Um, in other words, COVID 
we were, we were told when COVID gets under control and things start opening, the economy is going to start booming and everything's going to be you know much better. And now COVID is under control, at least somewhat, uh, more than it has been. Things are opening, and yet he's not getting great marks on the economy. So uh, the question I want to know, sometimes you, know, you solve a problem or you address a problem, and then people want to move on to the next thing. Is that what's going on here with Joe Biden? Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. Absolutely. He ran on you know, fixing the COVID, you know, coronavirus pandemic, and he's been given credit for that. And so, you know, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, that, that's and I think that's true for any politician. And that's where he's at. Yeah, we see that. So here's the other question uh, for, for the two of you to jump in on. Um, I've noticed throughout that Joe Biden's uh, his approval rating, that his people who strongly disagree or disapprove of him, outweigh those who strongly approve uh, of his job performance. I think the current number, it's a 32 uh, strongly disapproved, to only 21 who strongly approve. My take on that is if you don't like Joe Biden, you pretty solidly don't like him. I mean, you, you know, you've gotten there. Uh, we call those people Republicans. What's interesting is that his base is not as rallied behind him as the opposition. But how's this different from Trump? But how's this different from Trump? So his his strongly disapproved was up near 50 percent for much of his term. Yeah, he had a pretty yeah. strong anti base that was big enough to be almost insurmountable. And he had a very strong, strongly support. I mean, I'm not. Isn't that just the partisanship we live in now? Yeah. But the 21 doesn't strike me as high. Yeah, Barb. What did you well, yeah, I was just going to I was just going to add. I think that, um, you know, he does take some costs in this uh, in his when he wants to compromise uh, with Congress to get things through. Um, you know, he, the, the infrastructure uh, legislation is, is a case in point that basically he, he, was, he was willing to compromise a lot of the um, parts of that that, was, uh, that his base uh, really wanted. And so, you know, he has positive, you know, he has positive ratings. Certainly if you were to compare him uh, to other Republicans, his base is strongly in line with him. But, you know, there's there's still some lukewarm feeling because um, he is willing to, uh, you know, s sacrifice from their perspective, um, you know, some of the things that they would really like to put through in order to have bipartisan support on on the uh, on major legislation. Yeah, and people want results and they're not as necessarily as concerned about the process to get to those results. So if you, you know, put something on the back burner, you might pay a price in terms of your base a little bit. Just one other point on, um, on, on COVID. Um, I, I think if there is another wave, it's gonna be really difficult yeah. to get Americans behind um, you know, a lot of the precautions and a lot of the requirements that we had over the past year and a half. There really is, uh, um, you know, mask wearing um, is down. Um, you know, the plurality of people wear, will wear masks when required, but it's a you know, much smaller proportion of people who are wearing them all the time. I think what was also interesting in this data is when uh, people uh, who are employed were asked whether employers should require vaccinations, 57% of them said no. Um, and so I, I think there's a sense as things opened up, people are going to continue to want to keep things opened up. And, um, you know, another, another wave is something that will be a, will be a struggle down the road. But haven't we seen that we haven't we seen that the vaccine has worked? Why are things so much better now? No, don't go down. <laughs> okay. there, All right. Mary will kill us if we go down that road. Before we go to the index, I just want to call out what, as a reporter, would have been my headline. I mean, it would have been the number I would have pulled out of this entire poll. And this is two days worth of a poll that's getting released by NPR and PBS. And that is that a majority of Americans, 67 percent, believe that our democracy is under threat, including a majority of Democrats, 57 percent, a majority of Republicans, 83 percent believe our democracy is under threat and 67 percent of independents. I think that is the most depressing thing I've seen in many of our polls for a really long time. And uh, I think it speaks a lot to the undercurrent of dissatisfaction um, that we see, uh, not just in politics, but just in general. And, and for Democrats, it has to do with, you know, suppression of the vote and, uh, and, the, uh, and the, the attack on the Capitol. Yeah. 
uh, for, for the Republicans, that has to do with Donald Trump's argument that things were rigged. Right. And so it's two different views. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just wanted to point it out because it was. A- it, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. And that's actually a perfect segue into our next discussion, Jay, uh, because uh, we just put out uh, the uh, our uh, index of uh, our America Now index of how Americans uh, view overall uh, how things are how things are going in the country in terms of uh, health, safety, uh, the economy. And as you point out, we also talk about um, government and society. And um, there's there's an interesting twist there because although some things are up, that in particular is down. What did you guys take away from the, the index this time? It measures what's going on. <laughs> I mean, I think I think it's a very valid measure. Um, the, the, the one you point out about, you know, the the, the government um, health index questions uh, um, that that that's important. Yeah, people don't think society is fair and just, and and they don't think um, that their you know their politicians are connected to how they feel. Yeah, but we do see you know this continual you know improvement on whether people feel that jobs right now are easy to find. Uh, And that's the one I think that's, if I'm not mistaken, it's the one that's gone up and up and up the most to a point now where it's a, it's a, it's a relatively or comparatively decent number uh, from, from uh, uh, six up to 6.8 from way, way, way back at 4.2. So that's, that's one thing. And the other is, the other thing people are correctly assessing right now, and that is there's less concern about risk to your health. Um, uh, and, and that has to do with the, you know, COVID and, you know, things are opening up. So, so in a sense, we are seeing that. Um, and, and the index is overall, you know, eking up a little bit, but we still have the economy and the society and government still a drain on it. Right. We're at 6.5. We're at 6.5 last month. It has been creeping up, although we were at 6.5 uh, last October, I believe, as well. Um, the economy is what's driving this, and it's the jobs part of the economy. But is it a good time you know, to make investments, or is it a good time for your family, personally, financial? As we found out in the questions in the NPR PBS poll, not necessarily. So there's some, you know, there's some movement there. I do think that this, um, the, the fair and just society thing, though, is really again gets to this undercurrent of of um, feeling of, of sense uh, in America that America is not what it could be, and it comes from different sides, right? As you pointed out, Republicans think that's one thing, Independents think it's a different thing, Democrats think it's something else. But that has been since a year ago when we we've been doing this index every month, and so in June of 2020, we now have year over year changes, and it was 4.7 in June of 2020. And it's 4.6 in June of 2021. It's, it's the lowest number that we have. Um, people do not believe this is a fair and just society. It, it, not everybody, but there's a, it's, not, it's not a belief that is as strongly felt as the economy is doing great or I feel safe where I live, which is up at eight or, or whatever. I, I do think that it captures the zeitgeist right now. Yeah, it's not just Dems and Republicans. It's also you know, white and people of color. Um, and that isn't surprising is there any sense of are we going to get past this a little bit? I mean, is there anything that may come along that are we sort of locked in into this kind of pessimism on this question? I think that's a really tough question. Um, you know, if the economy, uh, you know, continues to improve, as particularly the jobs uh, picture, uh, we're able to avoid um, inflation. Um, significant inflation in the coming months because I think we're we're all seeing rising prices in a, in a, in a number of uh, uh, staples in a number of, of areas. Um, but then I take pause because um, if the economy improves, we're going to be right in the thick of 2022 when we start this uh, you know political polarization all over again for the midterm elections. And I think it's the I think it's really the uh, the way we we not even so much how we govern, uh, although that's that's certainly a problem too, but how these campaigns these campaigns are uh, are are uh, run and how uh, everybody's uh, in their own tribe, and we're going to have a lot of advertising uh, and a lot of um, uh, debate uh, in the in the coming year 
Um, and that's going to all start up again. The fun will just begin. Hey, Lee, we we forgot we forgot when we were talking about the NPR poll. Um, we forgot to mention that we asked a question about summer vacations, and this is a big vacation weekend coming up. And fifty five percent of Americans said that they do plan on taking a summer vacation this year. So there, there's a, a number that might help you with the next segment. And that is and that is actually a higher number than we do usually see. It's usually yeah, not over half. People choose to people choose to take vacations at other times of the year. Uh, not just during the summer. And uh, there's lots of reasons why, but I think people are, are hitting the roads. About 10%, yeah, about 10% are staying home, just uh, taking a staycation. But, um, but a lot of people are going to be hitting the roads either for the weekends or for a little bit longer. Well, funny you should mention all these things uh, because the SSRS uh, survey in 2018 which we located as we always do from the Roper Center Archives uh, at Cornell University. And, um, you know, the question is time and it's certainly apt for the weekend, July 4th weekend. What is your favorite side dish at a barbecue? Barbecue, And, and I'll say, I usually think public opinion's right on. I think it's this one, you know, uh, it's just plain wrong. Okay, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to what you guys- Are you gonna start with like, who did they, who did they interview? <laughs> so tell us what, tell us what, yeah, tell us the, the choices here. Yeah, they interviewed me, I wasn't there. Okay, so number one- Favorite side dish at a barbecue. I mean, ridiculous answer here. Potato salad as a side, 27%. Yeah, clearly not, the, not correct. Um, corn on the cob, I mean, I don't know where else the corn would be, but corn. At twenty one percent, that's your answer, folks. And then it goes down: baked beans, maybe mac and cheese, coleslaw, macaroni salad, coleslaw. Those are like I think big items, and they're way at the bottom. Uh, I feel like I'm looking at the the New York uh, <laughs> uh, ranked choice voting for a second there, but it does it does get it does go down. Okay, so the question is: I mean, am I right or am I wrong? Is potato salad your winner here, folks? I I, I don't get it. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have opted for potato salad. Uh... But um, coleslaw, corn on the cob. I think I think we're missing something here. Uh oh, uh oh. Is it a yes. German style potato salad, the vinegar based, or is oh. it the creamy mayonnaise based? Because <laughs> oh, I would true. pick one, very and true. I would that not. I would put different. the other so far down the list that it wouldn't even make the list, and I'd put one right at the top of the list with corn on the cob. Wow! And now you know why question choices make such a big difference. Exactly. And there's where we'll leave it. Have a good fourth, everybody, and be safe, please, uh, and enjoy it. And enjoy your potato salad or corn on the cob. And that's going to do it for this edition of Poll Hub. Poll Hub is a production of the Marist Poll at Marist College in beautiful Poughkeepsie, New York. I'm Mary Griffith, and Poll Hub's executive producer. Casey Schaff is our production supervisor, and Marcello Bettman is our trusted editor. Thanks, of course, to the Roper Center Archive at Cornell University. They provide us with the ability to look back at survey questions and results over the decades. And don't forget to check out our short series of online learning modules. They can be found on marispoll.com. The Marist Poll Academy is where we give you the one-on-one -on, -one on polls, methodology, and so much more. Oh yeah, and it's free. Of course, if you have questions or comments, reach out to us on social media. We're at Maris Poll on Twitter and Maris Poll on Facebook and Instagram. Finally, if you like what you hear on Poll Hub, please consider leaving a review on your podcasting app of choice. Positive reviews help others find us. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next week.